The three players tonight will be scratch bowlers, so we should see some very good scores. All right, week number one, we've got Triple Trouble taking on Balls of Steel. That's Balls with a Z. First match of the season is coming up next. We're back here at Southwick Lanes for the first match of the season in the BCSN Summer Classic. Karen Hall will bowl first for Triple Trouble, and her opponent will be John Eckhart of Balls of Steel. We are ready to go. The handshake that begins every match. Karen will bowl first. She's already bowled games of 120 and 139. The 120 was enough to give her the point based on the handicap. In this case, John has to beat her by 35 pins in order to take the point. I can't get 115 average, doing a very good job so far with 120 and 139. Over her average. Not a bad opening shot there, leaving the 4-7. Sure, there's some nerves. Most of these people have not been on TV before, but said home, watch the kids bowl. Now, Karen, she tries to pick up the spare. It's got to slide a little bit. It's got a chance. Uh, a little bit too much. So, Karen with eight pins to start out, and now we'll see John Eckhart for the first time. John coming off games of 151 and 179, a 28 pin improvement. Over his first game, his average is 158. And a good comeback to second game. A little bit of an unusual release here. Not a bad form, but uh, comes over the top of the ball. Fingers almost come out first. He pulled it to the left and leaves the 5-9. He went Brooklyn, if I'm remembering yeah. my bowling <laughs> terminology from the high school season. We'll see what you, how you do on the splits later on. <laughs> yeah, was... Not great, I'm guessing. <laughs> John also starts with eight pins. Switching to a different ball to shoot a spare. Straight at it. It's got to hang Don't on. Chop. Might chop it. And then, unfortunately, grab a little bit on the end. It's all right. It's all right. So he opens with nine, but he won't have much time to think about it. It's not a bad couple opening shots for the players getting uh, their feet wet on TV for the first time. We will remind you that just like the high school season, the bowlers will bowl their first five frames, then we'll have a commercial break, and then they'll finish up with frames six through ten. The score, by the way, the team score, seven five in favor of Triple Trouble after the first two games. Pulled again, it's gonna go left through the head pin. And five count. Leaves the uh, one, two, three, five, ten. Very unusual leave. We got a name for that, Don. Bucket with a man in motion. All right. Not usual I'll file to see that, that away. one. So <laughs> not usual to see that, that bucket, but. Uh, How do you try and pick up this spare? A uh, couple different ways. You'll probably want to try and go Brooklyn, hit the one, two, and send up one of the pins over to the Rocky. 10 pins, something like that. Oh. oh! Not the way you draw it up, but it works. So. He'll take the slash any way he can get it. Yeah. Got the ball a little bit too far to the left, but the head pin went to the wall. See the head pin go to the right wall, come off, kicks the 10 and the 5 out. That's what the ball's there for, to be used. So. Yeah, we'll see how Karen follows that up. She leaves five of her own. She went high on her first shot this time. She over just a little bit, went too far to the left. Leaves a one, three, eight, nine, ten. If you want to try and hit the head pin fairly square on this one. Very tough leave. Give herself a chance. Said got she it. got it. Great job. And a nice round of applause for Karen, the only bowler on either of these teams that did not bowl in high school. In fact, she did not start bowling until. She was 30 years old. Very simple, basic game. Just stays behind it. A little bit of an abbreviated follow-through. Better shot. In the pocket. There we go. Follows the spare with a strike. 
So a nice start for Karen Hall. See her hand straight up through the shot. Very nice end over end roll. Now back to John, who pulled for Southview High School. Kept in the team in his senior year. His high season average is 197, not too shabby. That's a nice approach, just at the point of release, he comes over the top, goes Brooklyn and leaves the five. Point. John is a Pete Weber fan. A lot of our high school bowlers during the winter are Pete Weber fans as well. Pete's very, uh, well, not only one of the top players in the country, if, uh, top players ever, but uh, also very animated on the lanes. Gets a big following for that. John picks up the routine spare. I think we have a lot of young bowlers in the area that know two professionals, Pete Weber and yourself. And me because I'm around town because they were too <laughs> they're too young to remember seeing me on television. So. Not too young to see you on YouTube, however. <laughs> there we go, yeah. Gotta love YouTube and Google. John now in the fourth frame looking for that first strike. That's a case of the pull so far tonight. Everything's going to the left. Sounds an awful lot like my golf game. See him working on his arm swing there. Leaves the one, three, six. Switching to his spare ball. I'm trying to hit the pocket on this one. Better shot. Should be good. So right where he wants his first ball, first ball to be. So John picks up another spare. The head stays down nice. Better shot there. Let's see if Karen can build on her strike from the last frame. A little too far to the left. Shoulders got a little open there. Similar to what she had last time on that lane, but she got the uh, nine pin out. Let's see if she can pick up a similar result. That was an awfully good spare that she picked up back in frame two. I'll shoot this one the same way. Let's see if she can keep pace. Got to turn a little bit. Not quite enough. So Karen leaves three. Still in good position. Uh, even though she's down scratch, she's up about 22 pins because of the handicap. Well, 52 pins through four frames. Shot a little high, leaves the two pin. Her position, that's pretty much what you want to do. Just keep the ball around the head pin, make spares, force your opponent to throw strikes. Karen, when she's not bowling, enjoys watching the grandkids and going camping. It's got to hang on. Oh, it turned just a little bit too much at the end. Throwing so the ball very nice, but uh, just a little bit off on the spares. She's on 61 pins through five frames. If she could double that in the back half of this match. She would reach above her average again for the third time this week. Now back to John Eckhart. See if he can take us into the break. His last spare shot was the best shot of the match. Good shot there. Oh, good. Should be flush. Good job. May have settled in now. So. Flaps all around for John Eckhart, who picks up his first strike of the match. Back to Southwick Lanes right after this. We'll see if that strike before the break 
really gets John Eckhart's game kick-started. That was his first frame of the day in which he had struck. His best shot of the match so far. <laughs> See him blowing on his hand, get a little moisture in there, get a better grip. See if he can get some consistency going here now. Need a few more of those. Hold it again, Michael Brooklyn. Does and gets the carry. He will need a few more of those if Balls of Steel is going to take the point. Two strikes in a row now. Hold to the left, the hand came over the top, but he got the solid Brooklyn. That's pretty much where Karen would like to throw her shot. Karen not wasting any way. time. And this is a good shot, could be right about there. Oh, terrible break. Great shot. Threw it right where she wanted, but uh, three pin went into the gutter, didn't come out and get the 10. I watched the polls on TV, watch other people here, and I'm like, I do. I shouldn't adjust my style to their game. He needs to make the spare to I see keep your some pressure on John. To, uh, I don't see too many shooting like that. She does go very quick, but left it out to the left too much. Not good at that size. So nine pins for Karen. Back here in frame seven. Pulls it a little bit to the Brooklyn side. One, two, four. It's the first time we've seen that from her in this match. He needs to make the spare here. John's starting to throw the ball pretty good. Karen's very quick with her uh, timing here. Over adjusted a little too far out to the left. Picks up one. <laughs> Big opening for John here to take control. unusual there he blows most people blow into the thumb hole he blows into the middle finger hole so come over the top pulled again it's gonna be high mm. no name for this one strangely enough but uh, there's the three seven ten <laughs> split yeah. no that can't be there's there's got to be a name for that we're gonna have to leave Somewhere. that one up to you to, to come up with a name for that one so. <laughs> that's my assignment for next week <laughs> I guess <laughs> Invent a name for the 3 7 10 split. Maybe we'll call it the Eckhart split yeah, if he can, if he can convert here, find yeah. a way to pick this up. What we want to do here is get the ball a little bit to the right of the three pin, send the three into the seven, let the ball take the 10. It's got a chance, got to turn just a little bit. And no! Oh, and he converts yeah. the Eckhart spin. <laughs> In honor of that conversion, we now have a name for it. The Eckhart split, ladies and gentlemen. Excellent shot here. You see the ball barely touched the three pin, goes to the wall, yeah. comes out and gets the seven. Great shot. And he actually moves into the lead now. So that pumps him up. That turnaround all started in the fifth frame. Strike, strike, spare since. Still hold it. Hold it again. Go to Brooklyn. Yeah. It's the Wally. Three strikes in four as Eckhart pulls away. Tries to pull away anyway. As long as they go down. He went to went to the Brooklyn. Brookie. Let's see if Karen can settle in here. Finish strong. Nice shot. It's going to turn up to the head pin. Does leaves the pesky ten pin again. That was great. The wind is hot out there. Great attitude about the way things are going. You're still smiling through it. Actually, average wise, not bowling a bad game. Just needs a spare or two here to, to get her average. For my hand, and there's the ball just to dry that off. Yeah. 
Gonna get over a little bit more. Got, Got it. it. Well played, Karen. With her advantage of 35 pins and uh, handicap, Sarah won 13. She's only down 19 pins. Hopefully my math is right there. See how she follows up that spare. See if she can get the setup frame here. Brooklyn leaves the two pin. Actually didn't quite make it. Brooklyn went high in the head pin. But should be makeable spare here. Relatively routine. Relatively routine. Turn a little bit. There we go. So two spares in a row for Karen Hall. Keeping herself in the match. John's got to continue to mark. He's got to slow his arm speed down just a little bit. Keeps pulling it. Well, it's worked for him the last few frames. Three strikes and a spare in his last four. Hold again, might get the rookie. See him pointing. He called it, so. Sometimes it's just your night, I guess. So he knew right away, he started pointing left. He didn't want the ball to go high on the head. And, uh, body English work there. Shaking his head, but hey, it's all good. As long as they go down. I know I can shoot. I just wonder, come on. No style points in this game, so. It's up in the 10th. He has a 222 possible scratch game. Uh, so behind heavy. the head pin. Brooklyn. Leaves the six pin. Gotta cover. Gotta cover this. On the one. And with that nine count, that will close out the match. But now it's for the pin total for the there team go. match. Good job on the spare. We'll get one more crack at it. Give me a nine here. At least a nine. 201 possibility. See if he can get at least nine and get his 200 game. in at least one league a year. We're glad he's chosen this one. That looks, uh, that looks good. All right. Nine count for 200 for even. With his handicap, gives him 249. Got and that's a great finish after a slow start. Four strikes starting in the fifth frame. Great comeback. Let's see if Karen can finish strong here in the tenth. Good shot. Came high and didn't get the break. And at least the four set or four ten split. That's a rough one. It's going to be tough. She's going to want to barely touch the four pin on the left side. Let's see if she can slide it over. Oh, right down the left side, shooting it the hard way. It turned a little too much. Good try. So John Eckhart wins our first match of the night. 200 to 124 over Karen Hall. That means Balls of Steel gets the point. Triple Trouble leads at 7-6. Match number two is coming up. a look at the top of the BCSN Summer Classic standings and part of the fun of Summer League bowling as we're 
At the start of the season, some teams are not named as of yet. Not named. They're still trying to come up uh, with their own identity here, so they're just going by team number. But, Something uh, clever and hopefully suitable for broadcast. <laughs> Triple Trouble has 15 points through week number one. Balls of Steel is at the very bottom. They only have one point thus far. They'll try and pick it up as the season progresses. They're off to a good start here. They've got six so far. They're moving up, but uh, so is Triple Trouble. So now in match number two, we'll have Joe Hall taking on Devin Bender. Joe Hall bowling for Triple Trouble. Devin for Balls of Steel. Joe coming off a game of 213. Through a 176 in game one. Muscles up on the ball, high revolutions. Got that one a little high. Three pin wobbles, but it won't fall down. Two teams here. I don't know if you watched the Derby over the weekend, but uh, starting at the back of the pack, it looked like all the high finishes in the Derby came from the back. So maybe these right. two are going to try that. So. Now Joe tries to pick up the oh, spare. He didn't like that, but that, that was made all the way. Can't draw it up much better than that. And now Devin Bender. Devin Bold in high school for Southview. Joe Bold for Swanton. He's got a hook a little bit. Right. Should be an easy spare. Here's the one, two. See two. Two players built completely differently, but uh, very similar games. Both fall off to the right. A little quick getting to the line. Got to hook a little bit. Did it. Good job. So two spares to start the match. These are two guys that have been bowling for a while. Joe since the age of five. Devin since the age of six. A little more experience, a little bit higher averages. Hopefully that'll translate to a little bit higher scoring. Devin's high average is 190. His high game overall, 268. Sam stayed up behind that ball. Good shot. He can get the five, see the pin roll across the back. Excellent shot. He held his form. Some players call posting it. See if he can make the five in here. Made a ball change for the spare. I'm not sure, but I think that may have been the third different ball I've seen him throw so far. Now back to Joe. Joe's high average is 205. His high game is 280. It was a nice game. A little bit duller surface to his ball, so pull a little bit sooner, but hold that one. It's the 136. And what's that called? Just the 136. Nothing more poetic than uh, that. That's a, that's a boring one. <laughs> a little bit quick with his feet. Probably nerves being the first time on TV. Making a ball change for the spare. Gave it some room. It's got a chance. Good job. So both Joe and Devin with two spares apiece through two frames. I forgot. <laughs> Same. Up behind the ball. Looks through it very hard. Falls off to the right. He's bowling. It's right where he'll want to have his first ball. It stays steady till right at the end. He pulls it. Great shot. Hopefully that'll settle him in. He can repeat that shot more often now. And we'll see if Devin can answer with a strike of his own. A little bit closer match starting out with the only eight pin difference in handicap. <coughs> a 
How do you like that? Devin with his best shot of the match so far. Answers Joe's strike. We get this ball out a little bit further to the right. Comes up. Head pin goes to the wall, kicks the four into the five, and the head pin got the seven. The old Wally shot. They, uh, well, all time great stick Weber, they said, made a living doing that, carrying sloppy hits like that. And that's does, does it again. Something's working, keep doing it. Two in a row for Devin. Look at this again. So a nice shot, he posted it. Ball comes in a little light, and head pin went to the wall. Almost a replay of the previous shot. And Joe coming off a solid strike. Let's see if he can repeat here. Hold it a little bit, goes high. Gets a break, leaving just the sixth pin. Both players have nice games. The only flaw I see is that they fall off to the right a little bit, or have a tendency to. It's a little timing issue. Now hold on. Good job. See if he can fill frames and keep the pressure on Devin. Devin had a great opening game of 232. He's had the hot hand this week. Been in the 200s twice, well above his average. Joe comes back with a strike. Great shot. Starting to get lined in. Him up behind the ball, very strong release, makes a nice turn on the end. Ten pin straight back. Devin coming off two wall, let's see how he responds to that strike. We'll see if he can hit one of his own, which yeah. he does. Get the swisher, the five rips out of there. He goes into the strike with our first turkey of the summer. Gobble, gobble. At the halfway point in this match, awfully close between Joe Hall and Devin Bender. How about the first five frames for Joe and Devin? Awfully close through five. Awfully close, both doing an excellent job, both clean. Devin coming off a triple. Let's see if he can continue, come out of the break, stay in his routine. Devin struck in the fourth where Joe could pick up a spare, and that is four in a row for Devin Bender, who is dialed in. 22-pin lead, actual, with the eight pins extra for, bone, for handicap. He's got a 30-pin lead. Great shot here, end over end. Yeah, he's throwing the ball much better now than he was throwing it in warm-ups. Yeah, whatever that word is. Spring in Walmart, did <laughs> yeah, you say? Walmart. <laughs> Probably shouldn't throw a bowling ball at Walmart, but... The aisles haven't been properly oiled, I don't think. <laughs> and another strike for Joe, who is a production shift supervisor at Phoenix Technologies in Bowling Green. That's an excellent shot by Joe. Uh, just outside third arrow. Let's see if he can repeat some more and stay in the match. He's keeping the pressure on. Got a on chance. Ah, ball come on. Broke a little too hard in the back end, left the four pin. Should be a relatively easy spare for a player of this level. Caught that one just a little bit too much and broke a little too hard. Gotta hang on. Nice yep. job. Thought I had it. Sometimes you see a strong release like that. With these uh, strong bowling balls, afraid it's gonna jump too hard in the back end, but he had control of that one. Had our first hand bone, and now let's see if we can add to it with a Yahtzee here. The turkey to the hand bone, one smoked meat to another. Ah. It's got a hook. Yep. Yeah. A little too quick on that one, leaves the left side clothesline. 
Devin works in grounds and maintenance for the Sylvania Rec Department. Is also a stock boy at a tea shop. A tea shop? He recommends the Earl Grey. Okay. Oh, wow. I thought he had that ball. Looked good coming in. Thought it was going to follow the line down, but uh, four pin wrapped around the seven. See this ball coming in. It's looking good coming in, but uh, just stopped for some reason. Drove the four around instead of into the seven, and makes it virtually an even game again. That's the first unmarked frame of the game. Either ball, and he comes back strong with a strike. First very errant shot uh, comes back to one of his best shots. See him stay there and post it. Great shot. Let's see if Joe can take advantage of the opening. Oh, pulled, maybe you'll get the Brooklyn. Uh, flush on the head pin and leaves the 4 6 10. Almost impossible to leave here. Want to get the ball to barely touch the six pin, just drop it straight over into the four. Or hope that a pin bounces out of the back. Give it a shot. A little bit too much, but valiant effort there. Great job. He almost picked up the hall split. Gets up in the setup frame. If he can strike out, he can still shoot 212. That put the pressure on Devin. Pretty much needs to strike here. Looks like a good shot. Gets the Wally. Good job. Thank you. These guys have been excellent. Excellent match. Only two open so far. See, trust this one out a little bit further to the right. Head pin went to the ball and stole a page from Devin's book on that one with the Wally. Nice shot. Is it going to get there? Didn't quite break enough. Mm. Leaves the 2 4 7 4 wobbling. Actually, probably a better break for him with the 4 standing than leaving the baby split. That's my opinion, anyway. Just some would rather have the pin count there, but. Moved it a little bit off spot. You see the four drifting a little bit. It may have affected his thinking there, but uh, open frame opens the door for Joe. Devin with a possible 2-11 game. Great shot. I love the way he's come back from a couple errant shots with a couple of his best shots. He's going to post it again. You notice every time he posts it, he's solid in the pocket. Mm Another great shot. This has been a fine game for Devin. And that all but closed it out because the best that uh, Joe can do would be 212. With the 8-pin difference in handicap, Joe could win scratch, but... Uh, Eight pin handicap is going to give it to Devin. Great job. Two open frames still shoots 211. Heck of a finish. Back here at Southwick Lanes for our third match of the day in the 
First week of the BCSN Summer Classic. These two teams are tied. Triple trouble and balls of steel. Each team with seven points apiece. Balls of steel has a 68-pin lead in total. Mark Wykowski, and he opens with a strike. Mark coming off an excellent game of 209. And, uh, has a 10-pin advantage in the handicap against Danny Flores. Now Danny is coming off of games of 232 and 205. I want to hear that. Danny's the highest average of the bowlers we have on the show this week at 201. Come on, sit. Hold, hold. Good shot. And he shows us why. So what you expect out of the two anchor players to put up more strikes? So we're going to the uh, puffball rosin bag there. Danny bowled for Northview. Mark bowled for Anthony Wayne. Uh, yeah. Danny's been at this a while, been bowling since the age of four. Takes six very tiny steps and stays up behind the ball very nicely. Rips the five out of there for a double. This will be interesting. Danny threw a few warm-up shots, but uh, Mark just kind of sat back and watched. Felt like he was ready, so see how it works out for him. A little light leaves the two-pin. Not bad. A little, a little high. We should apologize. We had some technical problems at the very end of the last match. Devin Bender did get the win over Joe Hall, 211 to 192. Both players pulled a very good game, only one open each. Got a hook. And it did. Not being all that familiar with Mark's game, I wasn't sure if that ball was going to make the turn or not. We watched Mark warm up a bit before the show started. He can put a lot of spin on the ball. And he does have some good power as well. Very simple, basic four-step approach. Comes through the ball very hard. A little too... Oh! <laughs> oh well. I thought he was going to miss that bin there, but apparently not. So you get the comebacker. I don't see that too often. Missed the head pin to the right. And, uh, pin went to the wall, came back up to four, and four into the two, two into the one. Like you said, you will not see too many of those. <laughs> it's a line drive in the box score. No, no, can't say they all went down. I broke it. Now back to Danny. Hold the low as it can hold. It does. Comes back. Sometimes it's tough to come back from a lucky break by your opponent, but uh, threw a great shot there. Great start. His high average is 225, high series 782, and a high game of 290. Has a very nice game. Six very short steps. It's the ball in motion. Straight up behind it. has got a hold. Didn't quite hold enough. Nine count. Could have been worse. No one's on Rosenberg. Help him hold on to the ball a little bit better. Should be a routine spare for a player of this level. Oh, oh pulled it. My usual jinx there. I remember that jinx from the high school season. So my jinx works on everyone, all levels. <laughs> Now Mark turn.
Mark's high game is 295, and that included 11 strikes in a row. A little bit late. Does he get the spin? No, leaves the four pin. Not quite as fortunate as his last throw. Again, should be a relatively easy spare for a player this level. And if he should convert, he would, with the handicap, take the lead. And <laughs> it, it almost slid past. After the last one came back and hooked so hard, I thought, sure, that one wouldn't. It almost laid off too much. He's been flush and missed the hit. Get on this lane, two shots. See how we set. Back flush. Great job. Nice shot. See the hand comes straight through. Ball makes a little turn on the end. And six kicks the ten out. Go back to Danny. Doesn't take a lot of time. Left an opening in his last frame. Did not leave one here. Great. At the halfway point of match number three, Mark and Danny off to great starts. Got a good one going here at Southwick Lanes between Mark Kwiatkowski and Danny Flores. Danny with four strikes in his first five frames. See if he can make it five and six. Had that open frame, which has allowed Mark to oh. in, uh, pull this one. Gets to Brooklyn. All right. All right. <laughs> Seeing all the shots today, Brooklyn's, Wally's, comebackers. <laughs> See, this one's left off his hand. He fell off to the right. It's been rolled into the five, five into the nine. And Mark needs to strike to maintain a three pin lead with the handicap. Got it down a little early, it's gonna oh. be wide. Yeah. Here that ball almost bounced. It got down a little bit early and uh, is the 2 4 10. Wanna get this ball, barely touch the two pin on the left side, slide it over to the 10. Try and hook it at it. It's got a turn. Just Four. takes the two. Takes the two. <laughs> Leave a big opening for Danny when he gets back up. Mark works as an electrician. Maybe getting called into duty here. He just might. <laughs> Better shots, gonna hold. Actually, it's a little too far. Thought that ball would be a little high, but uh, a little too much speed leaves the two pin. Should be an easy spare here. Very solid game. You couldn't jinx him that time. That time, yeah, that one was too easy, so. Second one, this side I hit See if Danny can get his second turkey of the match. Danny trying to put some distance between himself and Mark. Team game is all but locked up with the huge lead they had going in. Well, it's settling oh, the match. That's better. Hang out. Mm. Got that one a little bit to the right too early and hooked too hard. Leaves a 6 7 10 split.
Want to get this ball to the right, barely touch the six on the right hand side. Try and bounce it out. Gets the two. All right, take the two. He'll take the two as well. Still has the lead, but uh, needs to get back on it here. Speed left the 10 pin. Told you it was coming. Danny says, I told you. Still has the lead if he makes the spare. But he's allowing Mark back into this. Tough spare with his ball speed. hand out nicely, but too much. That's a good way of doing it if you're going to stay with the same ball for the spare, flatten your hand out for the 10 pin, just got a little bit too far to the right. Now Danny. It's the break. We've seen some awfully good breaks tonight. Sixteen pin lead going into the tenth. Needs a mark to lock it up. Actually, just good count. Eight pin should do it. That should be enough. Great way to end it. Danny opened with two fine games, 232 and 205. Climb over the 200 mark again. 222 possibility if he can strike out. Welcome back. Yeah, it's right. the Danny, by the way, works at J.C. Penny as a cashier. Strike here for 222 and a very nice 657 series. In fact, I think I may have bought this tie from Danny. 6.59 actually, but there we go, 6.59, great bowling. What a way to go out. <laughs> 2 .22. It means that balls of steel will climb up the BCSN Summer Classic a bit. As Wojtkowski throws a strike in the 10th. Balls of Steel will pick up 11 points. Move up two spots. Great TV game. All, all three players pulled very well. Finishing strong. That'll put him in the 180s. 
Balls of Steel on television through games of 200, 211, and 222. But 11 coming into play there. They went up 11 pins from the first to the second, and the second to the third, and they get 11 points. Turkeys in the 10th all around for Mark Wykowski and Danny Flores. Danny gets the win 222 to 186. Balls of Steel gets the win 11-7 over Triple Trouble. That means Balls of Steel will climb up the standings a bit. They'll climb up out of the basement after week one of the BCSN Summer Classic. And unfortunately, we're going to have to end the broadcast right about there. We won't be able to bring you the King of the Hill tonight. We're having some technical difficulties here at Southwick Lanes. But, Don, great first week. Great first week. Players did a great job. Everybody uh, pretty much over their average. First time on television. Saw a lot of strikes. Uh, some split conversions. Great way to start the summer. And a great way for Balls of Steel to start their campaign in the 2013 BCSN Summer Classic. For Don Janello and our entire crew, this is Mason Lowry saying so long from Southwick Lanes. BCSN in HD is presented by Nationwide Auto Finance, the biggest zero interest lot in the region for everyone. BCSN is seen only on Buckeye Cable System and nowhere else.